do you want to be on Hannah Montana? And in seventh grade, I was like, fuck yeah, I want to be on <laughs> Hannah Montana. I was like, wrote down the number. I took it home. I was like, mom, we got to go to this thing. Like, it would make me so cool if I was on Disney Channel because... You won't think I'm a <laughs> dork anymore. <laughs> exactly. I was like, this will like negate all my dorkiness and it'll make me famous in school. You did something... I think it's such a huge accomplishment that not a lot of people from Hawaii ever have a chance to do. You walked in the Victoria's Secret fashion show, yeah. which I'm a big fan of, <laughs> uh, ob objectively. A lot of people are. <laughs> <laughs> but I think like growing up, I, me and my sister were like two out of maybe like five in total Heli people mm -hmm. that grew up there. And it was hard. Like I definitely got teased and stuff, but it also like made me who I am. And I understand like, I'm gonna let this waterworks pass real mm -hmm. quick. And there, I'm like sucking them back into my <laughs> eyes. Sucking them back <laughs> into my eyes. <laughs> Delina Mike Kako, welcome to Keep It Aloha, a podcast that keeps it aloha by freezing our butts off whenever it drops below 75 degrees here in Hawaii. I'm your host Kamaka and you guys can't tell, but this AC in here is way below 75. So this butt that I'm sitting on is definitely freezing. But I will push through because we have an awesome guest today and I'm so excited for you all to meet her. But before we introduce her, I want to ask you to check out KeepItLoha.com to buy some KIA merch. We just released this new shirt with local artist Chris Miyashiro. It's so sick. I know supporting us with money is not always possible though. But if you still love this podcast, please consider leaving us a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. I read every single review and to prove it, I want to share this review from Hinans. They say, Mahalo Nui for using this platform to educate and inspire me. I truly enjoy getting my Keep It Aloha fix every week. Sometimes every day. Anytime I have free time, I go on YouTube to check out a current or past episode. I play it in the car while I do dishes and even on my TV while I work from home. Keep doing what you're doing and always keep it aloha. Mahalo. Well, mahalo hinans for this awesome review. Okay, let's introduce our guest. Some coaches are doing more than taking on opposing teams. They're also taking on cancer and you can help them. Texaco in Hawaii and Coca-Cola Hawaii are teaming up to raise funds for Coaches versus Cancer, benefiting the Hope Lodge, which provides free accommodation and support for cancer patients and caregivers in Honolulu. By any 28 ounce Powerade, 20 or 32 ounce vitamin water or 700 milliliter smart water and Texaco in Hawaii and Coca-Cola Hawaii will donate $1 from each purchase to Hope Lodge in Hawaii, up to $10,000 combined. Or make a cash donation of your choice at the pump or inside at the register. Join the team supporting Coaches vs. Cancer at Texaco. Our guest today is a professional model from the island of Oahu. She has done campaigns for Gucci, Ralph Lauren, DNG, Trusardi, and DKNY. This local girl was first signed with Wilhelmina Models at age 15 and has since gone on to walk for some of the biggest brands in the world, including Prada, Louis Vuitton, Tommy Hilfiger, Vera Wang, Dolce & Gabbana, Valentino, Armani, and Dior, to name a few. In 2016, she walked in the world-famous Victoria's Secret fashion show. Outside of modeling, she's an ocean enthusiast and is currently in school studying dietetics. I am super excited to talk stories with her today. Her name is KK Lingard. Hello, KK. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Hi. What a what a welcome. Yeah, you <laughs> that did was it a all. good list. <laughs> That's your list. You uh, you did your research. Yeah. I was like, oh, I forgot I did half of those things. <laughs> it's funny because when I introduce the guests, that's usually their reaction. Yeah. Like they forget they do, they've done all these things. Yeah. But it's kind of cool good, to look back and hear it all, right? Totally. It's a great yeah. reminder. And then you can stay humble because I get to brag for you. <laughs> yeah. So it's the best part. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sitting here listing off all the yeah. things that I've done. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So first off, before we get started, I got to congratulate you and your school. Yes. Coke Red Raiders yes. for winning the high school... State champion. State champs. Yes. I'm yeah. sure it's going crazy on that side, huh? Yeah, it was phenomenal. Like, I just love how how um, the towns around Kahuku support the team. Mm -hmm. And um, I texted you because my voice is still, mm -hmm. pardon the scratchiness, but it's still coming back from screaming at the game. Nice. It was a crazy game. It was such a good game. Yeah. Like both teams Came down to played the end. so well. Yeah. yeah. It was it was a lot of fun. But I was so grateful to be home for that. Like 
coming home from a crazy big city like Hmm. New York and being able to just like scream with like people that I grew up with and went to school with over Mm -hmm. something that we have uh, in common is just, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And when I, when I first met you a couple months ago at the Goodwill fashion show, with one of our past guests, Ali Chu. Yeah. Who I live with in New York now. Oh, no way. Yeah. (laughs) That's why you guys are always together. I I knew you guys are friends, but I didn't know that. Yeah, I know. We're like, not, we're like conjoined at the oh, hip at so this cool. point. <laughs> yeah. And then Ali was introducing me to you and she's like, you got to get her on the podcast. And we were talking stories and I was just so blown away by your stories. You're like, yeah, I didn't go to private school. I didn't go to, I'm from Koku. <laughs> and you know, my ignorant self was like, no way. <laughs> I know. It's because I think a lot of the time it's because of what I look like, <laughs> which is fine. But um, yeah, I don't all this I don't really look like I'm like born and raised in Kaaba and went to Koku and like you know all of that but I love (laughs) stereotypes yeah Yeah. which is fine but um (laughs) yeah I love that I that all of that is my life yeah super grateful I'm excited for people to get to know your story and how we like to start is from the beginning where are you from where you grad which we know and what was it like growing up um okay I was born and raised in Kaaba Um, and I actually didn't graduate from Kuhuku. I went there and I had to leave high school, unfortunately, in like 10th grade because I started modeling really young, um, which was a bummer, uh, cause Kuhuku graduations are like the best, but I went to all of them. (laughs) Um, but gosh, what was it like growing up there? I think a lot of people ask me what it was like growing up in Hawaii, like traveling around the world. And I think when you grow up here, it's like you're used to it. It's normal. Like you don't know anything different. So you just kind of take it for granted. Like being able to go to the beach and surf and meet up with your friends and like make forts in the mountains and like do silly things. Um, I grew up like not being on my phone, not watching TV, not like doing any of that kind of stuff that I think is so common now, um, which I'm super grateful for. And Hawaii just like gives us an environment that like, exudes nature and like organic movement of like the body and um I'm super grateful for that so yeah I think growing up here is just kind of like uh the blessing it's such a blessing Mm -hmm. and um I always get like emotional talking about it (laughs) because I'm so grateful but um I don't want to cry. I hate when this happens. I swear to God, every time. <laughs> it's all right. Let it all out. This is a safe space. We have tissues right over it's there. It's just because I'm so mm-hmm. grateful. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it really is. That. It really mm-hmm. is um, such an amazing place to grow up. Mm-hmm. So I'm super, um, have so much gratitude for it. Yeah. And like the culture. Yeah. I didn't make that connection uh, that you, because you, you started modeling at 15 and then you, you moved away for modeling. So... Yeah, so you didn't graduate from from Koku, yeah, which, which is fine. We'll still still claim it. It's right. Yeah, I still yeah, so. I still claim it because yeah. <laughs> I think I would have yeah. if I got to stay here. Um, but yeah, yeah, red, hey, they, like they say, Red Raiders for life, right? Yeah, I, yeah, and I never went to any other high school, so yeah, I'm like, yeah. so that's it was where. The last I, high school so yeah, you went it's to. the last high school I went to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'll claim it. Yeah, well, I went Hawaiian Immersion School my whole life, and then I moved my senior year to Kaiser, but I still claim my Hawaiian Immersion. School. Okay, yeah, and I did go to I was another high ask school. You. you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So I'm, a, I'm a cougar, but also a Navahi student. Well. Yeah, <laughs> nice. so I, I totally get it. Yeah. So what what was your life like before modeling? Because you kind of, your your trajectory of life just skyrocketed from yeah. 15 on, right? Yeah, it was super crazy. I um, I never really thought about modeling or fashion. I wasn't super interested in it. I wanted to be a pilot actually um, for a really long time. And I was such a dork in school. I loved school. I went to like science fair and like won all these like weird science awards and was just like kind of such a dork in school. (laughs) And at Kahuku is like not the place to be a dork either. But (laughs) (laughs) Um, so I, Roman actually scouted me. I, it's kind of a funny story. I was on my way home from school on the school bus from Kogu in seventh grade. And I heard this advertisement, um, over the radio that was like, do you want to be on Hannah Montana? And in seventh grade, I was like, fuck yeah, I want to be on (laughs) Hannah Montana. I was like 
wrote down the number. I took it home. I was like, mom, we got to go to this thing. Like it would make me so cool if I was on Disney Channel because- You won't think I'm a dork anymore. (laughs) Exactly. I was like, this will like negate all my dorkiness and it'll make me famous in school. And so um, we went to the thing and it was just like a modeling acting school. And they were like, you should do the modeling stuff. And I was like, oh, I guess like I'm really just here to be on Hannah Montana, but okay. And they chose me to go to uh, a competition in LA and I won all the modeling stuff. And that's where I met Roman, who's my still my manager. Um, and Roman is from Hawaii. And so there was kind of like an instant connection there because I just like knew I could trust him. Uh, and yeah, he took me to New York and I did my first fashion week. And ever since then, it just like never stopped. Wow, that's crazy. And just a little disclaimer, because people in Hawaii might get confused. Not Roman from Kolohe Kai. <laughs> Roman Young, right? Roman Young, yes. yeah. <laughs> Who's uh, just like a talent. Uh, yeah, he was an agent. An agent, yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, he was an agent. He also scouted my sister as well. Yeah, yeah he's so. a good one. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a really keeper my mom, sure. my mom loves him. So Roman, if you're listening to this. Aloha. I know. I just much love from my. I, <laughs> I talked to him yeah. yesterday. I was like, Roman, I'm gonna mention you just so you know. And he's <laughs> like, okay, great. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I I don't think I've ever met him, but I I hear his name all the time. Yeah, he's the best. Mm-hmm. He's um, he's such a such an intelligent human being mm-hmm. and so talented at what he does. And I think the fact that he brings people from Hawaii kind of into like that realm is mm-hmm. is super impressive because he's from, um. What town is he from? He's going to get mad at me for not knowing, but it's like. On Oahu? Yeah. He's from somewhere on Oahu. It's it's in town, which is why I'm so bad with knowing the it's names of Kalihi everywhere in town. <laughs> yeah. He's from Kalihi. Kalihi boy. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> just don't cut this part. They're going to take it out of context. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really love what he okay. does. I'm super nice. grateful I met him. But yeah, ever since that, I just did fashion week and kept traveling and Mm -hmm. it never really slowed down, um, which was pretty crazy. So So. so at what point did you know that this was going to be your career? Like, oh, wow, this is a a real thing. I'm not going to be a Hannah Montana, but I think I have a a real career. Long story short, I never made it on (laughs) Hannah Montana, which is a super bummer. (laughs) Hey, they they be be rebooting everything though. (laughs) You might have a, ch- a chance to. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. I'm like, maybe I could be like a mom on it or yeah. something one day. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> um, or you could be Hannah Montana when she's older. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, the whole name thing, which yeah. we'll get into, yeah. definitely <laughs> like maybe I, everyone teased me that I was yeah. trying to do the Hannah Montana <laughs> thing. But um, I honestly never really thought that in depth about it because I was still so young when I was. Uh, doing so well in in high fashion stuff that like, I mean, I was 15. I wasn't really thinking about like, this is what I want to do for my future. And I kind of just was it present, like mm-hmm. living in the now. And I think now when I look back on it, like I never would have thought that I would still be living in New York and mm-hmm. like having traveled the places I've traveled and like um, immerse myself in cultures that I've been able to because of this job. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. So, and how was your family recept? Uh, how did they receive that? Like, were they super supportive? Like, yeah, you should go, or did they miss you? Super supportive. I think I was. I was definitely the one that was like, um, I kind of want to just like go to school and be normal because <laughs> it happened so quickly um, that I really missed. Like, I loved school. Like I said, I was kind of a dork, so I really missed going to school and like being with my friends and like kind of having like a normal high school life because I was like jetting off to Paris and Italy Mm. and like doing all of these amazing things. But back then I really just wanted to be like a normal kid. And so I think my, my family definitely, like my parents definitely saw what it could turn into. Um, and they never made me do anything I didn't want to do, but definitely like were, um, they motivated me mm-hmm. to like keep doing it mm-hmm. uh, in a very loving way. But yeah, they definitely motivated me to keep doing it. And now when I look back, I'm like, thank you for doing that. But at the time, oh my gosh, I would like, I'd get so upset if I had to leave home and like, mm-hmm. I would get so mad at Roman. He's going to watch this. But I used to be like, no, I'm not talking to you. Like, I don't want to leave. And he's <laughs> like, you just booked a Dolce & Gabbana campaign. Like you have to go. And I'm like, I don't want to go. Um <laughs> So, yeah, it was like 
I guess I, I didn't really, I didn't see the bigger picture at that point because I was just young and wanted to like be a normal kid. Yeah. I think a lot of times when we're young, we just don't appreciate things. Yeah. So even like same with growing up in Hawaii, living here. It's not until I left that I realized how much I love this place and how awesome the culture is, the people. Just yeah. having the ocean so near. Oh my gosh. The first ocean I ever went to was Coney Island, which is like not cute. <laughs> <laughs> it, let's put it a nice way, not cute. And I like looked, I, I got into the ocean because I was like, it's the ocean. Like, of course I'm going to get in. And people were looking at me like I was like kind of crazy. And I remember like a dirty diaper or something like mm. hit me on the leg. And I looked at my mom and I literally just started crying. And I was like, what is this? Like I was, cause you see like photos and videos of like different places growing up mm. here, but you never really experience them mm. and like the reality of it. And that was like when reality hit and I was just like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe that I live. And Ka'aba is like so, so beautiful, special so beautiful, it, and it's so like, it's yeah. where the mountains come so close to the ocean. Yeah. So like I live on the mountain, but I am a five minute walk yeah. from the ocean. Um, and I never appreciated that until that point where I was just like, oh my gosh. Like, mm. this is amazing. I can see that too. Because uh, if you lived in town near the Alawai, you probably would have been used to the Coney <laughs> yeah, Island water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Guarantee has some diapers inside there. Yeah, but like <laughs> being near a body of water that I like couldn't get into. Yeah. I, it was like, it was such a, a weird phenomenon that I yeah. like was not used to. Um, and I miss it a lot still when I'm in New York. Like jumping in the ocean is, is such a... <clears throat> grounding experience mm -hmm. and it just like brings you back to earth and I think it's it's such an important thing to like integrate into your life especially for me when I'm like in all of these like crazy cities and around these like exuberant cultures and people and like so much money and like all of this stuff and sorry my voice is like no no it's so it's bad <laughs> no we got two more hours so peace yourself <laughs> <laughs> um but it's it's such a special place to come home to and just like reground and like re uh, feel the earth beneath my feet. Yeah. And um, I mean, I, I feel that on a, a smaller scale as well, just living on Oahu, but going to the big island mm -hmm. for vacation. I mean, just this, you know, recently I, I went home for Thanksgiving and I haven't been home in a couple months. Usually I'm always there like once a, um, once a month, every other month, but it's been a while since I've been home. And, you know, we're here right in the middle of Honolulu, you know, just like look outside. You see all these buildings. Oh, we're know, in concrete. Crazy. This yeah. is a concrete jungle. I see one tree over there. <laughs> but it, it really is a, a grounding feeling where you can get away from it, especially um, where I live. It's, you know, no big buildings. Yeah, it's I was just gonna greenery. Ask. You're never really like more than 15 minutes maybe from the ocean. Even yeah. though I, I didn't go to the ocean this time, but you know, it's ju it's just nice to have that uh, that wildlife around you, because we're not meant to be in these boxes. No, no? we're meant and to go outside and get sun and do yeah. all these other things. And I'm very much so reminded of that, like because I live in New York, mm -hmm. like I like do not see much greenery, mm -hmm. and I live. Me and Ali live near Central Park, which is like such a blessing. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it's kind of like cool and hip to live downtown and people always like kind of joke because I live uptown, but it's just because it's close to the park. Like mm -hmm. we, I go to the park every single day and I just need like some kind of nature, uh, because it just gets so like exhausting. Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually, I, I danced hula at, uh, Kulo Ranch for 12 years now. Um, and I still go when I'm home and when I'm like stuck in my apartment and I just don't have anything else to like make me feel grounded in like a nature aspect, I'll just like call my kumu and dance. That's so cool. And that, that's such a good tip for people living away from Hawaii. Yeah. Like kind of yearning to be connected, to stay connected. You know, if you, you can't learn the language or even just growing up outside of Hawaii, you know, part of yeah. that diaspora. It's just find things that can ground you and keep you connected whether that's listening to this podcast following somebody on instagram learning hula there's 
it's always so surprising to to hear all these like groups of Hawaiians in cities like Washington. And we like and, find like, each other too. Yeah. <laughs> and the, you always gravitate towards each other. Yeah. And, you know, there's like hula halals all over the world. Yeah. My auntie actually just started one in uh, Auntie Kavahine. She started one in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's so cool that they're, they have those um, small little communities. So yeah, I think that's just really good for people to keep in mind is just to like find your community. Yeah, and yeah. find ways to like stay connected with your community. Mm-hmm. Like I think an important thing to remember when you leave Hawaii when you're from here is like it never goes anywhere. Like nothing really changes mm-hmm. here. Yes, I say that all <laughs> which, the time. Which is a good thing. Yeah. Like it's a nice thing because when you come back, like it's always the same. Mm-hmm. It's always home. Like the community, the culture, the families, like the people, the food, like everything is always like there. So you're not like missing out too much when you're gone. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I definitely think it's important to find things that help you like stay connected. And that's definitely one of them for me. Yeah. And going back to like the getting out of Hawaii, because it, it would always be here. I mean, it's so true. Like there's the, the world is so big. You yeah. don't realize until you travel to other parts of the world and you talk with people how tiny we are <laughs> yeah. in, in comparison to everything else going on in the world. We are literally a small rock in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. We're like so Like far from everything. So far. I think <laughs> my, thousands of miles from any landmass. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I think it's, it's great just to be able to explore, learn. Yeah. And, you know, all parents should encourage their kids to leave. I mean, even if you don't have the support. Just go. Just just do yeah. it. I mean, there's ways. There, there. Um, I wanted to travel, and I joined the Peace Corps. That that's a free way to to travel and live abroad. And there's a lot of programs similar to that. So yeah, ways to possible. find it. I didn't know yeah. that you did that. That's incredible. Yeah, Madagascar. I was gonna ask where yeah. you went. Wow, mm-hmm. how was that? The best experience of my life. Wow. Just, how yeah. long were you there for? Three years. Three. The, the contract is two years, but I extended for a year. Really? Yeah. So first wow. two years was just living in the middle of nowhere, no running water, like got water from a well, bucket bats. That's incredible. Toilet outside, everything. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah, I think different, dif- different than the high fashion world. So different. <laughs> <laughs> but both, both um, I, I great you, in their own way. You ways. took a lot more showers than me. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably did. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it is important to leave at some point just to like know and understand like how much gratitude we should have for mm-hmm. being raised in a place that's like so special. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just remember that it never changes because yeah. people leave for like three or four years at a time and then you come home and you're like ready to settle down and mm-hmm. like be here. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's super important to remember. Yeah. No, well, thanks for sharing that. You did something, I think it's such a huge accomplishment that not a lot of people from Hawaii ever have a chance to do. You walked in the Victoria's Secret fashion show, yeah. which I'm a big fan of, <laughs> uh, ob- objectively. A lot of people are. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching the videos on YouTube, you know, like the, it's like Victoria's Secret mod angels lip singing to a song. Oh, do you know yeah. those videos? Yeah, yeah. I watch those all the time. <laughs> I know. It's such a. I literally had like imposter syndrome when I got it. Yeah, I was like, are you sure? Like Mm -hmm. me? I don't know. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) Is it someone behind me? Like, I don't know if it's me. Um, It was like such an incredible experience. I worked so hard for it. And I think every girl that does that show, like, I mean, people are going to see you like in not too much clothing. Mm -hmm. So you really want to like... present your best self and it's a lot of pressure but it's also like such a amazing feeling when you accomplish something like that Mm -hmm. um so yeah it was it was an incredible experience what was your biggest takeaway from that um that's a good question there were a lot of takeaways Mm -hmm. I think one of my biggest takeaways would just be um, I think like, uh, how important staying humble is maybe because I think like I met so many like famous people backstage and, uh, like some of like, you know, the VS girls that have been around for years. And I think like, I was so surprised by just how humble and kind and like welcoming they were because like 
I was like, are you sure that I should be here? <laughs> like mm-hmm. among all these amazing people, even though like I know I worked so hard to get there. Um, yeah, I think like the importance of staying humble and like staying grounded, even though we're like in Paris at this like in, in like crazy, you know, um, Coliseum or wherever it was. I forget. Opera House, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were just like still all just like having fun and laughing and um, eating pizza. Mm-hmm. And like Lady Gaga was like eating cookies with us. And like we Wait, were like. No, people, people are not going to believe that. Yes. Models eat pizza and cookies. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. After that show, you best believe. I was like, get me some food and alcohol stack. <laughs> Um, cause I wanted to celebrate, yeah. but yeah, it was, so yeah, I think like being humble and being kind to everyone goes so far. Um, and yeah, I think that would maybe be my biggest takeaway. And also like, if you work really hard, you get where you want to mm-hmm. get. <laughs> what well, was that ever on your radar to make it to the Victoria's Secret fashion show or did it just come up randomly? Um, I think any girl who models, uh, it's kind of like one of like, to me, I think it's one of the biggest things mm-hmm. you could do in sure. that like realm um, of being a model is like your mm-hmm. career choice. And so it never, I didn't really, like I said, believe it when I got it. But at the same time, like I strived for that because it's, you know, it was something that like is a huge thing to do in your career mm-hmm. as a model. Um, and I think just in in general, like it's a pretty cool thing to be a part of. It's mm-hmm. such a famous show and um people all over the world like watch it and know about it um it's very like it's a very uh you hear Victoria's Secret and you just like immediately think of that show mm-hmm. I've so, applied many times and they rejected <laughs> me when I had long hair and all I think I tried like three times before I actually got it oh well, that, that's a great lesson to be learned <laughs> yeah so never give up keep, never give up keep going mm-hmm. um but yeah I didn't really think that I was ever gonna get it but I definitely like worked hard and mm. what, what for made it. you overcome that imposter syndrome? Um I still think I have it like to this day a lot of the time. Um I don't know necessarily what I don't think I've fully overcome it. Mm. But I think it's important in our lives to look back and like look at the things that we've accomplished and and conquered and worked really hard to do. And when you think of those things and like, you know, I'm sure like you've done so much in your life um, that has gotten you to this point. And I think it's important to maybe like think of those Mm. goals that you've accomplished uh, because once you kind of like make that list in your head, you're like, oh, you know what? I do deserve to Mm. be here. Like I've worked my butt off and so has everyone else in, in this arena that I'm in, whatever it may be at that point. So I think, yeah, it's like reminding yourself of how far you've come. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great point looking back and seeing all your accomplishments. Not that you have to go share it with the world, but just like internalizing it and being like, I did this. I was capable of doing this. I got through this hard part of my life. I I worked for all of this and now I'm here for a reason. And like there's always a reason you're here. Nobody just stumbled upon greatness. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, you work for it. And I think sometimes there is a negative connotation with like talking about what you've uh, been successful for in your life because you don't want to come across, um, you know, like full of yourself Mm -hmm. or narcissistic or like any of those like things that have negative connotations with them. Um, But I do think it's important, like even doing things like this and like hearing the little list of things that you said beforehand, like it's, it's interesting because you don't talk, I don't talk about it. Like I don't introduce myself and I'm like, Hey, I'm a model Mm -hmm. and I did Victoria's Secret. Like I would never in a million Mm -hmm. years dream of like introducing myself as that. Um, but I think, yeah, it's, it's, uh, important to think about it and like check in with yourself every once in a while and like talk about, talk about it with like your friends or family. If you don't feel as though you want to you know, push it to the masses. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's super important to remind yourself how far you've come. Yeah. Well, I think that's good for you because you probably have a lot of exciting things coming up. 
Because they, they say, you know, if you're talking about what you did yesterday, you're not doing much today. <laughs> yeah, you know? it's true. So that, that could be it is that your life is moving so fast that you don't have time to think about, oh, wow, that was so cool. I did that six years ago or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. 11 years ago. When it, how how many years ago was that? 2016. 2016. So it was, this seven. is going to, yep. Seven years ago. Did I say seven? I just threw I, out that number. I think you said six or seven. Oh, okay. Well. Just that was close. <laughs> that was really close. Way better than I would have done. And it's literally my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, another thing that I'm really curious about is being a model, you always have to be cognizant of what you're putting into your body. Mm-hmm. Because that that's basically your job. Yeah. You know, is to share, share, stay healthy and, you know, be able to, you know, hit these poses and whatnot. But also just, just stay healthy generally, <laughs> yeah. right? So, and, and I know you're studying dietetics, which I still yeah. feel, I feel like I'm saying it wrong every time I say it. <laughs> no, you're doing a great job. Dietetics. Everybody try to say that word, dietetics. It sounds <laughs> dietetics. wrong. Dietetics. It sounds wrong. Um, yeah, so you're, you're studying that. So what, what is, how did you get into that? Is it through modeling that you became more aware of what you were putting into your body or were you always like that? No, I, I think growing up, I was, um, so unaware, I think because I just was like so tall and like awkwardly skinny and like gangly. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was always like active and in sports. So I never really, honestly, probably should have paid attention more. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, but I was always just a really good eater and never really had to worry about it. Um, and I think, I think it's a really, particular balance that you have to have with being aware of it, but not obsessive. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's definitely what happened to me. And I unfortunately got an eating disorder, um, when I was 16 and 17. Um, and so I got too aware Mm -hmm. and obviously that, that also can work against you. Um, and so I think studying dietetics and bringing the two worlds together, I kind of want to like bridge that gap. Um, and help people with eating disorders and disordered eating in general, because I think disordered eating kind of comes from disordered information. And there's like exuberant amounts of information about diet out there these days. Um, And I was like, what can I do or how can I get to a place where I'm like so educated on it that like people aren't going to question it? Mm -hmm. And dietetics, being a registered dietitian is kind of like the highest... um, it's like a doctor in nutrition, basically. So it's the highest like credential you can get in it. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's clinically based. So I was like, okay, this is all research based. It's no, like, it's not about fad diets. It's not about like um, only holistic healing or only Western medicine. It's kind of like a mixture of all of them Mm -hmm. and how you can like apply them to if you're in uh, the hospital with heart disease, if you're struggling with an eating disorder, if you're um, an athlete and you want to like, uh, run at a more optimal pace, like it, it can kind of like dictate so many things. And so I think, um, disordered eating definitely like brought me into the realm of dietetics, mm-hmm. but I def, I want to do so much more with, with it just like educationally. Cause mm-hmm. I think that's like, you know, people are like, what do I eat? Like it's, what do I, what am I supposed to do? What do I eat? Because Mm -hmm. the information is like, there's just so much out there. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, that's, that was a really long answer to that question, but that's kind of what got me like started. Okay. And how are you studying it? Is it like a course you're taking? Is it a... It's, um, I go to, I go to a college course, so I'll get my bachelor's next year. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) I studied nutrition at UH actually, Mm -hmm. and I was a semester away from graduating. And then I was like, I can't just get my degree in nutrition. I need it in dietetics because I wanted to like get the highest thing Mm -hmm. that I could certification that I could. Um, and so I get my, my bachelor's degree, my undergrad, and then I do my master's and then you pair with a hospital and you do like hours, like residency kind of for a year. And then I take my board exam and then I'm mm-hmm. done so in total oh. I have three more years left okay nice Get in there. <laughs> so Get we're in almost there. there yeah no I think it's, it's a battle it's definitely something that 
more people should look into, even if you know you're not trying to get a degree or a certificate. Or yeah, something. yeah. Because especially in Hawaii, where we have such a good lifestyle, healthy lifestyle, but we have a lot of unhealthy people. Yeah, it's like the paradox is so crazy to yes. me. Yes, and it's just because of our eating habits, you know, and it's really just habits. Is yeah. you know the plate lunch, you know, even as great as it is, and how we, I as love plate as lunch, is, yeah, but maybe there, not every single day. Exactly, yeah. and it, it all comes down to everything in moderation, whether 100%. that's alcohol or you know plate lunches, chicken katsu, whatever. So you know, ever since I turned turned tur- the teas, now I'm thinking of dietetics, <laughs> dietetics, <laughs> when I turned thirty, <laughs> thirty, when I turned thirty. <laughs> uh, I, I really wanted to focus on my health. And I've always been a healthy person. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I've yeah. played sports all my life. I'm very active. But I, I really wanted to, you know, be in the best shape of my life as I get older. You know, we do, I don't want to wait till I, I something bad happens and then like, okay, now I'll change yeah, my like life. Yeah, like a wake up call. Yeah, yeah. Because that happens a lot. So much. Um, you know, you you find out you're you're you have like onset diabetes or something like that, or your cholesterol's high or something, and then you start making the moves. Where there's so many things that we can do to be proactive and avoid yes. all of that. A hundred percent. So I mean, I'm all about that. Like I got into fasting a couple of years ago, and I think the biggest the biggest perspective shift is not looking at at it as a diet, but more of a lifestyle. And it's, it's going to work for some people and it's going to not work for other people. But it just depends if that fits your lifestyle. Yeah, for sure. I think um, I def- I like that you touched on Hawaii because it's definitely something that I want to bring back here. Mm-hmm. Um, I really would love to in the future, like create a nonprofit and just like uh, have a platform that people can kind of go to to like get information that is... Um, it's not overproduced. It's simple. And it's just like, this is what you eat in order to be a certain way. And of course, like precision nutrition is mm-hmm. definitely everybody's different. So everybody has different needs. Um, but I, I do think it's, it's very needed here. Um, I'd love to work with like the DOE and like help restructure school lunches. And there's like a, a long list of things that I want to bring home and kind of um, help help uh, mm, enlighten people on mm. on how to nourish your body in a way that's going to keep it going for longer. Yeah, I think the hardest thing with just like all these these things in life that we know we should be doing, we know the answer, but we just don't do it. And I think it just comes down to like discipline. Yeah. That's, I think that's the, the hardest part is like we're always looking for motivation, but man, motivation is nothing without discipline, you know? So what what would you say is like the biggest advice for people to just be disciplined and start their journey into health? Um I have I honestly have like I have mixed feelings on discipline just because I was super disciplined like to a Overly point of like having a disease. Mm. <laughs> um everything in moderation. Yeah, <laughs> I can laugh about it now. Ha ha, but it was like super gnarly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think, I think it's, it's really finding the balance in being aware. I I wouldn't necessarily say that you need to be extremely disciplined about it or obsessive over it. Um, but being, being aware and not putting too much pressure on it. I think the moment that you start a diet and you start saying no to things, you want them more. And it's Mm -hmm. just like psychologically, that's kind of how we think. Like as soon as something gets taken away or like I'm like, I can't have any cookies this week. Like all I want is a cookie. Um, And so I think it's, it's, it's saying no to less and saying yes to more, if that Mm -hmm. makes sense. Saying no. So don't try to cut everything Mm -hmm. Like that go, you love out turkey. of your diet. Yeah. yeah. But start adding new things in that, you know, are better for you and that you want to incorporate into your life. So um, I guess that's what I, that's, that's my biggest thing that I tell people mm-hmm. is to just not say no and cut it cold turkey because it's just going to work against you. And I don't think there's ever been much longevity to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think... I think um, 
being aware of what you're putting into your body and kind of like respecting your body. Like if your body is, you know, the only thing that you have that keeps you going, you want to respect it. You want to nourish it. You want to take care of it in the best way that you can. Um, and if you need outside motivation, like if you have kids, if you have family, like be healthy for them, mm. I mean, you should be healthy for you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you if you need something more then that that could that could suffice as mm -hmm. motivation. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's my answer. I don't know if that was. Yeah. Did I like run around that or was that? No, no. Okay. I, I think <laughs> I think that's good is. Uh, yeah, if if you need external motivation, I think that that's it. Definitely helps, you know. Yeah. Especially for parents who you know don't have the best lifestyle or diet, and you know they want to be around longer for their kids. Yeah, you know, or that's their a grandchildren. huge or their grandchildren be able yeah. to run around. You know. Yeah. I think I think it's it's so important. And I think the more that, I think the more you push yourself, uh, to do it the external validation will become internal validation because you're kind of proving to yourself that you are capable and that you can do it because mm -hmm. we really are so much more capable than like what we, you know, give ourselves credit mm -hmm. for a lot of the time. Yeah. It's so mental. Yeah, like, definitely. I think it's like running. Like mm -hmm. we think, you know, we're super tired at three miles and like the, it's over, but like technically your body could run a lot more than yeah. that. It probably only it's performed so at mental. like 30 or 40 <laughs> percent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's such a mental battle. And I think um, diet and food and how we nourish ourselves is so mental as well. Like food in general is is, is such a, there are emotions tied yeah. to it. Like I think there's a reason why, um, you know, food is such a huge part of people's culture. It's It's how we like share time with our loved ones. It's like, it brings people together. It is such a, an important aspect of your life that I don't think should be tainted with, with like, no, you can't do this. Mm -hmm. Or like, you know what I mean? I think that, that there needs to be balance around it. Um, and yeah, I mean, Hawaiians never ate kalua pig and la la <laughs> every single day. You know? Exactly. Like, it was yes, celebratory. Good, exactly. Yeah. You know, for special occasions. Yeah. They had a great diet. One of the best diets in the entire world. The native Hawaiian diet is so good. I read this book called The Why and I Diet. I don't know if you ever heard of oh, it. Oh, no, I haven't. It's super interesting. I've mentioned it on the podcast before. Okay. But it's just like, it's I'll a study it. where they, they brought a bunch of people, uh, put them on a strictly Hawaiian diet of just, you know, fresh things, fish, even seaweed, stuff like that. And... Um, they, they, so they, yeah, they, they lost so much weight. And I think like some people who had to take, who had diabetes, they almost reversed it or like they didn't have to take their um, insulin. I insulin, think that's yeah. Called. Yeah, I read a couple years ago, but it always sticks with me because, man, we had all the answers back then, but we, we, we've come so far away from it through, um, through all these influences. And like it's everyone fall. Uh, fails sometimes, you know, like oh for sure. I want to eat super healthy all the time, but then man, it's hard to say no to a chicken katsu. Plate, exactly, you know? which you should be able to say yes to yeah. every every yeah. now and again. Um, but I do think I think you're so right. I think like um, Westernized society has has unfortunately fallen um, kind of under like. How do I want to articulate this? Uh, like they colonized our diet as well. That's <laughs> yeah, what <she> exactly. Said. <laughs> um, I got you. Don't worry. <laughs> no, but like it, diet has taken on monetary value to mm. uh, like our economy, and especially and not in Hawaii, but um, on the mainland, like where is it's where we get all of our food from which also I wish would be changed and I think is slowly changing um, with different like things like FarmLink and like different, oh, uh, farm link, yeah. yeah, different platforms that bring local like produce and meats and stuff like that uh, gives them kind of like a place to be sold and mm -hmm. makes it really easy to get them. Um, I think, yeah, unfortunately, like capitalism has kind of dictated our diet. 100%. And yeah. It's it, super sad. It's expensive to eat healthy. It's super expensive to eat healthy. Yeah. And even like... Not impossible though. Not impossible. Not impossible. Go to your farmer's markets. Mm -hmm. It's a lot cheaper than shopping at Whole Foods mm -hmm. most of the time. Um, but 
yeah, it's sad that that's affected, you know, how we eat as a society in general. Um, and I think it's important to like go to farmers markets and like participate in like supporting your local farms and, and, uh, people that produce meats and everything like that. Uh, because that supporting that stimulates the economy and keeps it local, which I think is so important, Mm -hmm. um, rather than like getting everything from Safeway, which I love Safeway, but you know what I mean? Yeah, no, try your best. Same with how you want to be conscious of the way you treat your body. Be conscious about supporting local. Yeah, for sure. That's all it is. For sure. And speaking of being conscious of what you put in your body, like ever since I started fasting, I noticed the difference of how my body reacts to certain foods and the foods I crave. Like, you know, if I'm not drinking a lot of water, then I'm going to crave like sweet stuff or whatever it is. Because there's always like a, a cause and effect of everything. For sure. You know? And a lot of times, even when we think we're hungry, we're just thirsty. Yeah. You know? So there's all these like things that once you research and you you really kind of try out on yourself. Yeah. It makes so much sense. I mean, if I eat a burger with fries for my first meal, I'm going to feel terrible. Yeah. If I, well, and it's true. It's like, it's going back to like the emotional tie into food. Mm. Like sometimes, mm. you know, like you think you're hungry, but really like you're sad or you're upset and like you want to go to food because it's comforting, which I mm. totally get. And sometimes it's fine to do that. You know, like sometimes after a long day, I just want to eat a bag of popcorn on my couch mm-hmm, and talk mm-hmm. to nobody. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay to find comfort in that. But I think a lot of the times, like take a deep breath and ask yourself, like, why why am I craving this? Or why am I like mm-hmm. reaching for something? Is it because, you know, it's going to make me feel better? Is it because I'm homesick and it, it ties me back? It makes me feel like I'm at home or mm-hmm. like there's so many different psychological aspects of of um, how we eat. And I think like taking a step back or taking like a beat and being like, I'm actually just thirsty. Um, it kind of like allows you to come to that on your own instead mm-hmm. of like, you know, just going for mm-hmm. a bag of chips. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts on fasting, by the way? Um, I think it's incredible. I think, um, you know, each person is different. And so it's kind of hard to apply that to everybody. But I mean, it's how humankind it's, per- it's, a, it's primitive. Yes. Um, and I think it's super, I think there's so many, clini- I actually just read a clinical study about it, um, about how like cognitively you're a lot clearer. Um, I think there's so many like great benefits to fasting. I personally, like if I'm hungry in the morning, if I wake up like starving, I'll eat because my body is hungry for something Listen for some reason. Body. Yeah, but most of the time I also fast. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've been, I've done like different, how many hours do you fast for? I usually try to go 16 minimum. I also aim for 18. Okay. And then sometimes I go longer depending on what I'm doing in the day. But I think the great thing is that I know I can go without food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whatever yeah. I'm doing, I know I'm not controlled by my yeah, appetite. Yeah, your appetite. Yeah. I tried the 18 hours for like, a, uh, I did it for a few weeks. Mm-hmm. But there were definitely times where I was like, I'm hungry now. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think uh, the difference in like male and female makeup with hormones Mm -hmm. and 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 all of that, um, it's a little harder for women to to continuously fast. I think like women should fast like for five, three to five days and then take a break and then three to five days again. Um, But the research behind fasting is, is fascinating and there's so many benefits to it. Fascinating fascinating yeah, yeah. we can start that as a trend <laughs> hashtag fascinating <laughs> hashtag fascinating yeah hashtag dietetics hashtag <laughs> fascinating <laughs> yeah yeah oh uh, oh there's one one more thing i wanted to mention before we move on about that but then i got distracted by that our hashtags um fascinating oh yes um do do what fits your lifestyle because for me, and yes. I'm talking to, to people, for me, I have, I was never a breakfast person. I never Same. I never ate breakfast. I'm never hungry in the morning. So that's why it works for me. So my first meal is around noon or afternoon yeah. or whatever. So it just it just fit my lifestyle. Yeah. And not everybody's gonna be like that because some people love breakfast. Yeah. And then I make exceptions if it's like a social thing. Um, yeah. even though I'm not hungry. But as soon as you put food in your body, the floodgates open. Exactly. <laughs> and then you get <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. You do what do what's best for your body. And 
I think it's just about being intuitive really with how you're feeling um, at that time, whether it's hunger, whether it's emotion and kind of like ask yourself where it's coming from and then do whatever the root of the, yeah, the root of it is. I think if you're, if you're on the journey of being your best self, it starts with what you put into your body. Yeah, for sure. You know? And like, that's where I'm at in my life, whether that's exercise, just conversations with people, business, but it all starts with your body. For sure. You know? And feeling good in your feeling body. Feeling good, exactly. Yeah. Because if you, I, yeah, it, it, it's all going to trickle down into everything in your life, how you treat your partner, how you treat your family and friends, how you perform at work. It, it It's all connected. I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. It all starts with that. And, I think it's it's good to remember and it's good to check in with yourself because there's so many different like things that distract us nowadays. Like you can pick up your phone and be distracted mm-hmm. for two hours like very easily, mm-hmm. which unfortunately happens a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that that's such an important thing to remember. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a huge part of nourishing your body with food. Mm-hmm. So last thing before we take a shishi break, because I'm going to have to relieve my body soon. <laughs> it's a shock of tea. Uh, what, have you ever gotten into the sauna and ice bath, the contrast therapy? Yeah. I've been doing that a lot. I'm obsessed F45. with contrast therapy. I love it. Okay, cool. I cool, love cool. it. It makes me feel so good, especially in New York. Um, I was so homesick recently and I was like, I just need my body to feel good. I need to get a good sleep. I need to like realign everything and I did a contrast therapy and uh, I was like, oh my God, I feel like a new person. Mm-hmm. Like this is so great. And when I was training for VS, actually I did a lot of it mm. um, just because I was like working out so hard that recovery is such an important aspect in taking care of yourself. It's like pushing yourself, but also like finding those times where you rest Mm -hmm. and I think recovery is such a huge part of that so yeah I love contrast therapy yeah yeah all the little bio hacks to like yeah extend your life the longevity of it all yeah it's like we're in the age of all of that I feel like yeah well and we're in an age where like I think we have so many tools that can like that can support the research behind it Mm -hmm. so we actually know that it's clinically proven to do this Mm -hmm. or to not do this or so it's easier to to um to confirm like hypothesis or theories of of how things affect your your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is so cool. I know. I know. I love it. I, I nerd out on on stuff like this. Yeah. 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 It's it's really interesting. I think do you ice bath? Ice bath almost every single morning. I just came from it right really? now. I do F45, then I go to the ice bath sauna. I do three rounds. I didn't know that they yeah. had. It's connect the one in Alamana. So if anybody's interested, use code Kamaka20. Yeah. Nah, I want to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. If, if you, you're here for a couple of days, but you're going to have to drive pretty far. That's the only Yeah, thing. I know. But I'm if used you're to in it, town though. at any point, yeah. I, I, so I'm actually an F45 ambassador, so I'm allowed to take people. Oh, so yeah. So if, if you do want to do a, a do session it. or if you just want to work out, if anybody wants to go, Check out F45 all in one. They're so awesome. Yeah. Love okay. It. I'm excited. Yeah. So they, they have the, the the sauna and then they have the ice bath and you just do a couple rounds. Or you can just do one round, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Depends if Is I'm busy or not. Is it a normal or infrared sauna? Uh, it's, a, it's a normal and it gets to like 2.30. It's so hot. Have you tried infrared? Yes. My uh, sister-in-law and brother have one in Hilo. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Oh my it's gosh. Also good. I love infrared saunas. Yeah, yeah. They're the best. Both of it is good, but even just... Uh, cold submersion has so so many benefits on your body so and I just love benefits. it after you're done you just walk around your body temperature is so I know. cool I know I, I even do it in New York when it's like freezing out mm. because it just makes me feel That's better crazy. yeah I mean people say that taking cold showers are, are really beneficial as well it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, I do yeah. that. I will start with my shower hot and then I'm like okay, uh, time to be uh, good for your body yeah. and I <sighs> finish it cold I can't I don't know how the people only take cold showers because I know some people that do that. I used to try to do that and it just made showering like a little yeah. stressful. And I was like, mm, I don't have time in my life to be stressed about yeah, my shower exactly. right now. That's what, see, that's exactly a point where you can, you know, do things uh, in different parts of your life to, yeah. you know, be, be the best or whatever. Even though we know there's benefits of cold showers. To me, I, I feel like a shower, a warm shower is just very soothing it's, and like 
relaxing. So comforting. Yeah. I don't want to hate showering. Yeah. Well, that's what <laughs> happened to me. And I learned my lesson. Yeah, and yeah, I was like, exactly. mm, we're just going to stick to Yeah, cold. yeah. So pick and choose Ice your battles. Bats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. Totally. Well, so th- we'll definitely schedule a time be- before you head out. Yeah, I would love that. Okay. All right. We'll be right back after a quick shishi break. Immerse yourself in the underwater wonders of Hawaii's marine life with Hawaii Ocean Charter's hands-on guided snorkeling tours. Whether it's your first time falling in love with Waikiki or you're rediscovering its beauty just like me, there is no better way to see it than from the ocean. Personally, it was one of the best things I have done this year. I got to snorkel with some turtles and fishes and I was able to catch the coolest sunset over the water. Conveniently located in Kakako with online booking and live availability, finding the perfect day on the water couldn't be easier with them. Ride in style on their unique and well cared for power catamaran that offers all the amenities you need. Locally owned and operated, their friendly crew lives for sharing their love for the ocean with others. Sunset cruises, guided snorkeling tours, well and dolphin watching, coastal sightseeing, and firework shows are among the tours their guests love the most. Use code KIA50 to get $50 off of your next charter. All right, we're back from a quick shishi break. Mahalo to our drink sponsor, Shaka Tea, for always providing the best quality shishi. <laughs> How are you enjoying it? First it's, time trying it, yeah? Yeah, it's so good. I mm-hmm. love it. And I also like the the ingredients. Yeah, as a dietetic, yeah. Yeah, as a dietitian. dietitian. <laughs> I knew as I just wanted to say that As a dietetic dietitian. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really yummy. I love this one. Yeah, we'll give you some to take it's home. It's helping so with sh- my, my, uh, my voice that's yeah. been, been lost. Your super cool voice. Can we all just agree that <laughs> when you you lose your voice and it sounds raspy, it sounds super cool? I do think it sounds cool. Like, I think it makes me sound way cooler. I just like... Honestly, I didn't think you were that cool until I heard you talk. The raspy voice, yeah. yeah. Well, (laughs) if anyone sees me (laughs) and I don't have this voice... (laughs) Just know that she's cool. Just know that I'm (laughs) trying to be way cooler than I am. (laughs) Imposter syndrome. (laughs) Imposter syndrome. Right back to it. (laughs) See how we... we, It's full circle. Full circle. All right. So we'll get into the social media fan questions presented by Texco in Hawaii. All right. First question comes from ev.lun. They ask skincare routine. Bunch oh. of question marks. Um, I get that one a lot, and I'm not gonna lie, I've been blessed with good genetics. Um, but I think the thing to stick to is don't fix, don't fix what's not broken. Mm-hmm. Don't try to fix what's not broken. Mm-hmm. There we go. Um, use simple stuff on your skin. I think the more complicated you get and you have like a 12 step program, it's not going to be as beneficial. Um, and drink a lot of water. I think that that's my biggest, my biggest, uh, suggestion would be just stay hydrated Mm -hmm. because you'll glow from the inside out, honey. That's how we do it. (laughs) it. And for the guys, my tip, um, six in one shampoo, all you know, everything in one: body wash, face See? wash, shampoo, Basic. conditioner, everything simple. Bar soap, face wash, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you though, the it's the more basic, the better. I think the more complicated you try to make it, the more it's just like it's just you're adding more to something that doesn't need it. Yeah, that's that's one thing that I got. I kind of got into a little bit is skincare. Cause you have really good skin. Well, it's just because of the the technology that I have. <laughs> yeah. it works in person as well. <laughs> no, because I I use so when I I used to live with with my ex girlfriend, she was all into skincare. So I oh, have yeah. all like the really good stuff, oh, you like have, the nature yeah. stuff, and I, and I do the um, toner. Oh and really? Stuff. Yeah, and you then do I'm, more than I do. Yep. Wow, skin, that's skin Skincare king. <laughs> So I, I'm trying to get into that. The one thing that I, I still can't figure out is my forehead gets shiny after like uh, just like throughout the day. I think yeah. it's really oily. So I don't know if it's not drinking enough water. One thing I heard is that um, I'm not moisturizing. So it's like dry. So it creates moisture yes. or something. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm Maybe trying to figure that out. I think um, the last thing you said about moisturizer… I definitely think that could be mm-hmm. it. Okay. Moisture. Do you yeah. moisturize twice a day? Only at night. Oh yeah, do it in yeah. the morning too. Yeah, I'll try. We'll see. 
But I mean, <laughs> we'll come. If, if, that we'll make that a full circle yeah, thing. Yeah. Well, I'll let you guys know how that goes. <laughs> if the moisturizing in the morning and at night. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll try that out. Okay, next question comes from Nahaku underscore n underscore Haukea. This person wants to know what is your favorite childhood memories. Well, I already told you I'm a crier, so buckle up. <laughs> Um, oh, wait, hold on. Get the tissues out. <laughs> <laughs> hold it right um, here. What's my favorite childhood memory? That's a really good question. I don't. I don't think there's necessarily one in particular. Um. But I think just like in general, in Kaava, I grew up. In like it's like a little neighborhood, and oh, okay, yeah, I have. It's not one memory, but it's something that we mm-hmm. did all the time. Um, every Halloween, Kaava has no uh, street lights, so it's mm. dark, and we would like crush it on Halloween in Kaava. And we, I grew up with um, three, my little sister, uh, my friend Emma, my friend Mai. And we were like the crew and we did everything together. And I think I'm running around with this question because there's just so many memories popping up in my head right now. Um, But I think just like on Halloween, we would all get together and trick or treat and come home and like set up our candy shops because we would trade candies because oh, some nice. of us liked yeah. some candies and others didn't like others. And we would try to trade like five Tootsie Rolls for like one Snickers. Nice. Um, and, and that's that, how capitalism begins. I, exactly. We got <laughs> taught at a young age. <laughs> but this was training at yeah, least. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that that's like a, a core memory that happened every year that I that I – love looking back on but I think just in general like coming home from school and like not even calling I would literally just like run to my Mm -hmm. down the the road to my girlfriend's house and be like hi let's hang out let's play um super grateful for that the good old days yeah Yeah. right yeah I my phone got stolen this not not a funny story but kind Mm -hmm. of my phone my purse got stolen in New York recently and my phone was in it and I didn't know any of my friends' phone numbers in New York because Mm. we don't memorize them. We don't memorize them anymore. Literally, the only phone numbers I knew were like my childhood friends in Kaaba that still start with two, three, seven. Like, (laughs) and I just, it was so, it was like such a funny reminder of like how times have changed. But yeah, that was like, that was a, a good reminder. But yeah, I still know all of their phone numbers. That's so funny. <laughs> the only numbers I know are the, the ones home that I phones have my, too. Yeah, the home phone numbers. <laughs> and then my parents. And then I think my brother's, my neighbor's phone number. And then I think my best friend's mom's phone number. Yeah. It, it just sticks with you. It just sticks with yeah. you forever. I could like tell them all out yeah, right yeah. now. That's so funny. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a great answer. I think I was just thinking about that couple of days ago just like whoa what's my favorite childhood memory but it's really just childhood it's just in was general the, the greatest memory because it was such a good time and we're, we're pretty much the same age so i think being able to grow up without social media half without social media and then half with gave gave us such a good life because we we know how simple it is we know yes. the the feelings that we can have without it and how how connected we can feel being disconnected from it all for sure. Uh, and then, you know, when we're just so involved with social media and all the technology that we have, it's tiring. It's it's a great tool, but still it's not, at least for me, it's not what I want my future to be. Oh, no, me either. At least for like the long term. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I feel this exact same way. Mm-hmm. But that is funny that you bring up that perspective that it gives us because we did grow up without it and kind of with it mm-hmm. at the same time. Yeah, half and half. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, gosh, I remember when I first got an iPhone, I was like, <gasps> because when I first started modeling in New York, I iPhones weren't even a thing yet. And so I had to like Google and look up how to get to, like I didn't have Google Maps on my mm-hmm. phone to tell me like how I drove here today. Like I had to look up on maps yeah. where each building was and like figure it out from appointment to appointment, mm-hmm. like how to get there by subway. And if I got called and it changed, I would be like, ah, 
I don't know how to get there because I already planned my day around what you originally gave mm-hmm. me. Like you can't throw this in there. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. When I got my bag stolen, I just did not realize how dependent I am on my phone. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this yeah. is this is a, a wake up call for sure. Yeah. If anybody's brave enough, try to leave your phone at home when you go out or you go do something. I do that a lot mm-hmm. at, here. Like yeah. if I'm going on a hike or I go to the beach, like just to not have it, nice. not look at it and be away from it. Yeah. It's so important. Yeah. That's the, the only time I do that is when I surf. Yeah. Which isn't well, often enough. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. But it is a great feeling to not have to worry. And also like check notifications. Yeah. And somebody's calling me. I got to respond like, to something. Or like if you see something, you're yeah. like, oh, I should like get this. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah, it's yeah. like, no, not everything mm-hmm. has to be filmed or photographed mm-hmm. or like documented mm-hmm. electronically. Like put it in your brain and yeah. move on. Unless somebody's paying you. Don't keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously. <laughs> that's why we do it. Honey. Yeah. <laughs> We're here Out to make the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so are we good on the Kleenex? Yeah, I don't need it. You survived. Yeah, I survived. Nice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this next question comes from my stepdad, Chloe Robinson. He said, being a model, you're always cognizant of what you're eating. But what are your favorite Hawaiian and local foods that you like to grind? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, Kaya store in Punalu. Is that... Is that- the butter mochi that they make is so... Pardon my swearing, but fucking good. <laughs> It is the best butter butter mochi you'll get on the whole island. Do they have the spam musubis there? Yeah, is they it? have spam musubis there too. Okay, Jordan. They have all their stuff oh. there is good. Because she said Kai store? Kaya's. That's, Kaya. Kaya. Oh, okay. Maybe you're thinking because we had Jack Soren on. He's also from that oh, side. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was saying uh, I bet the, you be, he the was best spam musubi about. was this one place. But we went there after PCC one time and we didn't think it was the best. It didn't, maybe it so. wasn't. But, where was it? Was it? I think it was Kai store. It was, Is it? Was it in Punalu? It was like Little Pass. Oh no, it wasn't Punalu. Oh, okay. oh, you said Punalu. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm it's thinking in something Punalu. Else. Okay, never mind then. To scratch everything I said. Continue. Wait, I'm. So, where did he say <laughs> that the it best was, was? It was right past. I went uh, to high Sam, school. With Jack. Sam store. Sam. Oh. Uh, it was. It was right past the PC, PCC. I think it was. Sam. Towards Ko- I think towards Koku way or towards towards Paula. Uh, past Haula towards going towards North Shore. So I'm oh, not familiar no. with that side. I think it was like Sam store or something. I don't know. But anyways. No. Kyle basically we're saying Jack Soren is a liar. <laughs> Cut this. Jack Soren is a liar. <laughs> we love you Jack. Okay. Next time try the one at Kaya's. It's, okay, Kaya. it's fire. Okay. Yeah, right, it's right. really good. Kaya um, is fire. Yeah. That's how I remember it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and what else? I think, honestly, I feel like the the best Hawaiian food is like when you go to like a grad party or something. Like you can't just go, it's not the same when you go to like the poi factory and get a plate lunch mm-hmm. or something. Like it's good and I love it and it'll suffice for the moment. Jordan's smiling because that was his take when uh, we did an episode together last year. He said the best Hawaiian food is at the grad parties. It is. Yeah. Or like a wedding or like mm-hmm. something like that. Like mm-hmm. when everyone gets together and like brings their dish that they're known for. And yeah. it's just like, it's the best. Yeah. yeah. It's made with extra aloha. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's 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 my take on great that. Great answer. Great answer. <laughs> <laughs> I remember everybody, Jack Soren is a liar. <laughs> just <joking>. No, Jack. <laughs> we love Jack. Okay. Next question comes from Raleigh Tabora. I think that's how you say Raleigh Tabora. What were some important lessons you learned in your modeling career? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I was forced to grow up really quickly because I was like 15 when I really took off. Um, and so I kind of had to learn how to be around adults and manage uh, myself and, and learn how to present myself in a way um, that seemed like I was older than 15 because I was, you know, modeling women's clothing and I was around adults all the time. Um, so I think some of my biggest takeaways would be, um, it taught me a lot about different cultures around the world and how, you know, people communicated and how they ate and what they ate. And, um, like going to Paris or going to France and Italy and like Germany and uh, the Bahamas and like even different tropical places. Like it was super interesting mm-hmm. to, to see. 
Um, so that was really cool to experience different cultures. Um, it taught me how to, to, uh, present myself, I guess. Um, because I think it's important to obviously, like, you don't want to obsess over how you present yourself, mm -hmm. but you obviously want to take pride in how you show up, um, and how you articulate yourself and how you dress or how you like look. Um, I think it taught me the importance of that. And I think the biggest takeaway would probably, which this is going to tie into something else that you'll probably ask me, but being kind to everyone and treating everyone with equality, whether it's the someone that's like mopping the floors um, or the CEO of the company. Um, because one, you never know how long that janitor has been there and like what that what they've seen and how they're connected to the CEO or whatever it may be. But it's just important to treat everyone the same way um, and not treat people differently because what they can give you. Um, and I think the humility in that like will take you a long way. And mm -hmm. I think that's like one of the biggest takeaways for sure. Beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Great takeaway. <laughs> okay. Next question comes from the real night Jayhawk. This person wants to know where does your name KK come from or what does it mean? Um, okay, so this is a very common question. Mm -hmm. So my full name is Caitlin. Um, but when I was little, my little sister couldn't say Caitlin, so she said KK. And my family just started referring to me as KK. And um, it's spelled K-E-K-E. -K -E, and in the Hawaiian language, KK means like something sweet like cake. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they kind of like, that just became like my family nickname. And then my agent heard my mom and dad refer to me as KK and they were like, that's your model name. And I we was love like, that. great. Go with it. <laughs> yeah. So I just kind of ran with it. And now it, it almost feels kind of funny, like introducing myself as KK because I'm like a 29 year old woman and I'm like, hi, I'm KK. Like <laughs> it, it sounds like it feels like such a childish name, mm. but um, I love it because it, you know, reminds me of home. It's my little mm. tie to home and um, I maybe I'm living my Hannah Montana Miley Cyrus life with the Caitlyn KK situation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so right now, is this Caitlyn or is this KK? Um, Caitlyn okay, for sure. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to redo our intro now. <laughs> no, 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 Caitlin no. Caitlyn, no. this is the professional. I, I'm supposed to be KK here. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. You're, you're just code switching, but did yeah. through personalities, through not per just the ways yeah, of speaking. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, well, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. I know I called you Kiki at first. Uh, yeah, and a lot of the time I can tell how people know me by like how they refer to me mm -hmm. because Kiki is like, it's like my Instagram name mm -hmm. or like how you would know me from like my career. So, um, and I think people that don't, aren't from Hawaii. Like I think most of the time people from Hawaii like C-K-E-K-E -K -E and like pron pronounce it properly. But Kiki a lot of Palmer, people don't. That's why. Yes, so people think it's Kiki. I'm like, but to me, Kiki would be K I K I, mm. but I don't know. Yeah, depends what language you're. Depends you're, on you're, exactly yeah. like what culture or language mm -hmm. you're coming from, or like seeing it in that yeah. like perspective. Yeah, which is a great life lesson is that everybody's always coming from a different lens. Yes. Whether that's reading a word or just living life or yeah. perceiving something, it, it, we're all come. We all come from different background environments. Everything. Yeah. So. And you can't be mm -hmm. too hard on other yeah. people for not seeing it through the same lens exactly. you do. Yeah. Except she cussed me out so bad when I first called her Kiki. <laughs> you guys do not want to hear what she said. <laughs> no, he was so nice. He called me back and was like, wait, is it Kiki or KK? I didn't even, cha I didn't even uh, fix your pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's so nice to talk. <laughs> like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> like, whatever. It's fine. All right. Last question, which is the best question we've got so far comes from Jay Fowders. This person says, is it true that you peed <laughs> on the, your pants on the streets of New York when you were 17? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's definitely true. I had just moved to New York. Yeah, I was 17. I just moved to New York. And the thing about New York is it's massive and there's so many buildings and there's so, but like, there's not like a lot of public restrooms. So when you're out walking around, like you have to go into like a restaurant or like now I know my places mm -hmm. and where to go. But like when I just moved there, I had no idea. And I remember I was on the phone with my mom and I was like walking down the street and I was like, mom, like 
I really don't think I'm going to make it home. Like this is an extreme situation. I might have to, I don't know what I'm going to do. And it's not like you're in Hawaii where you can like go in the bushes or like pop a squat somewhere. Like you're there. It was just cement everywhere. And I was like, I just moved there. I was so like overwhelmed by everything. And I was like, shit, I don't know what I'm going to do. And so I sat at a bus stop and like tried to like, I was like trying to calm myself down. I was Mm -hmm. like, it's okay. I had like two more blocks to walk. I was like, it's two blocks away. You'll be fine. The elevator ride and then boom, you're golden. And so my mom's like slowly trying to motivate me to like walk two blocks. And I got up and started walking and I just was like, I'm going to pee my pants. Like I can't hold it anymore. Just let it go. And I just let it go. And I was (laughs) like, well, this is it. And then I walked two blocks with wet pants. I was wearing jeans. Where were you, were you like leaving uh, like drip marks? I, um, or did you have some I, pretty absorbent jeans? No, I think when I fully did pee my pants, I like was, I walked to the side and just like stood there. Just shook it off. The yeah, <laughs> I was like, I'm just, I just need a moment. Like I'm not going to do this while walking because I know it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then as I was walking, like, I, Yeah. Respect, it was, respect. The jeans were absorbent. And you know what? Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. I had, yeah. I didn't have control over my bodily yes. functions. And I was like, all right, this is happening. Yeah, don't worry about it. I will spare everyone the Peace Corps stories. See, I'm sure everyone <laughs> has a story. Everybody has a story. Luckily… You're lying if you say you don't. Yeah, I don't I don't have a story like traveling like I, I did that. Um, Like a lot of volunteers, you know, they've had like… The opposite end. Yeah, of that which happened. I which would be my worst. Which nightmare. would be crazy. Like yes. I think peeing your pants yeah, is like not that not, big yes. of a deal. We do we all do it growing up. Yeah, I mean I was seventeen, so <laughs> maybe, but <laughs> it's still not not an adult yet. So you can say when I was a exactly. kid. Exactly. <laughs> when I was a kid. Technically I wasn't. Yeah. I can yeah. say I was a kid. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna yeah. use that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh there, there there are worse things though. But yeah, thank you for being open and sharing that. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm an open book. Su- supermodels. They're just like us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, mahalo everyone for the social media fan questions. Make sure you leave some for our next guest. And maybe a question will make it on the podcast. Right now, we're going to get into a really fun game that my team at Hawaiiverse created. And I'm you're going to be the excited. first guinea pig that we tried on. All right. Okay. I'm honored. So uh, let me bust it out. Hold on. And if you're just listening to this, uh, if you have some time to go to the the visual feed on YouTube or Spotify, it's called Mo Gabs right over here. It's a uh, <laughs> it's so Mo Gabs by Hawaii verse. Basically, if you've ever heard of Mad Gabs, basically you read the gibberish out loud and to decode the local phrase. So it's a it's a play on Mad Gabs, but just like a local version. So on top of the case, it says Cone Hawk Off He. Cone hawk off he. So you just gotta keep reading it and reading it until you f- figure out it's Kona coffee. Cone hawk coffee. So Kona coffee. So I'm gonna bust some out. Okay. And we're gonna see. Did if you guys KK, make up the gibberish? Yeah, we that- made it up. Oh, snap. So okay. one of our our founders, his friend, came up with the idea. I think it's. It's either Scott Nishimoto and David Aquino. So shout out to them. And they were like, hey, you guys should make this into a game because I think it'll do really well. Yeah. Uh, so this is our first sample pack. We Hopefully by the, the time this comes out, it, we already have a bunch. So keep an eye out. Go to whiteverse.com. You can get one. Okay, I put some on the side to do it. And it's like double-sided like this. I don't know. Right there. Where do you show? So it says, so you read it over here, and then on the bottom it says the the answer for the word in the back. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you you usually play with a partner. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna read it and you have to try to guess what it is. Okay. Let's try this. Okay, ready? All right. Leak king muhi. Leak king muhi. Lee moi. That was an easy one. Yeah. Starting off, starting off easy, okay? Well, that makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> I was like, snap, I'm gonna. <laughs> okay, what about this one? Lock key wheel lift how why he. Lock key wheel lift how why he. Something Hawaii. Here, you can you can try to read it too. Lock key, lock key wheel lift how why he. 
Do it's you funny. know it? It's funny because I know it. So when I hear you say it, it's funny. Rocky will lift Hawaii. Okay, well, the last word is Hawaii. Okay, yeah. So Lockie. 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 Lockie will. Lockie will lift. <laughs> Lock. I don't know if people can see it. Lock. So it's spelled like. Is that two words? Yeah. Or but, is it one word? But it. Lockie is trying to say one word. Yeah. And then wheel lift is trying to say the other. Yeah. Lockie. Lockie. Lucky. Lucky. Wheel lift Hawaii. Lucky we live Hawaii. Nice. Oh my there God. you go. <laughs> You know when you when you hear so, when you hear it, someone yeah. else saying it, you're like, oh, I know what it's it so is. Funny, yeah. But when you're trying to decipher it exactly. for some reason, exactly, yeah, you're like thinking too much into it or something. Yeah, here, do you want to try one? You can try yeah. to read it and I'll try to guess. Okay. You can just look through them. So the you're gonna be looking at the answer in the front, and then you gotta turn it around to read the gibberish. Wait, it's it. the top one and then the bottom. So, so the-, the top one is what you're reading, and in the back, the small one is the answer. Yeah, so the the small one at the top is the answer for the one you're looking at on the other side. Oh, got it, got it, got yeah, it, got yeah. it, got it. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Sorry, that took me a second. No, no worries. Okay. Light, light sheet treat. Oh, lychee tree? Oh, yeah. that's an easy one. Okay. Well, yeah. you gave me an easy <laughs> one first. So. All right, all right. I appreciate that. Okay, mess me up. That's too easy. <laughs> She's trying to find a good one. <laughs> Giving the play-by-play. Yeah. Okay. Um. You say that check, right? Yeah. Check cans keen. Check cans keen. Check cans keen. Check cans keen. Check check cans keen. Check cans keen. Check cans keen. Check cans keen. Oh, that's a hard one. Check cans keen. It is a hard one. Check cans keen. Check cans. Check cans keen. Does anybody know here? Anybody can help me? Check get hands my- keen. Oh, nice. Oz uh, on the other side of the camera. Got it. You know what's Check funny? Ins- chicken skin. About nice. chicken skin. No one else. No one else says oh, it. Oh, they say goosebumps. They say yeah. goosebumps. And I say it all the time like, oh my gosh, I have chicken skin. And they're like, what? And I'm yeah. like, what? What do you mean? What? How do you not know what that means? Mm-hmm. And it, it's a Hawaii thing. Yeah. I never realized. Chicken skin. I wonder Kish. where that comes from. I know. Me either. Yeah. Me too. Chicken me either. skin. Okay, last one. Okay. Sitting up for this one. I, okay. I can't embarrass myself on my own game. <laughs> I embarrass myself. <laughs> okay. Raw shut hat. Oh, raw. Oh, Ozan sounds like he knows what it is. Raw shut hat. Raw shut hat. Raw? Ross? Raw. Raw, raw, raw shellfish? Raw. No. Raw shut hat. Raw shut hat. <laughs> Why does everybody in this room sound like they know it? Raw shut. Ah. Raw shut. <laughs> raw shut hat. Oh, I'm not good at this. See what it feels like yeah, to be when on, you're the on the spotlight. You're on the spot. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's Literally, scary. we got spotlights over here. Yeah. Raw shut. Raw shut hat. Yes. Oh my gosh. Raja that. Yay. <laughs> oh man. Well right. done. Okay, well, I need to do one more for you. Cause okay. you you got you got off kinda easy. No, I didn't. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh <laughs> let's see. Uh, I wanna find a good one. Don't try to make it too hard. Okay. I'm okay, already okay. nervous. Okay. Let me see if I can do this one. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Bro, like a bro, cut dumb out. Bro, cut dumb out. Broke them bro. out. 
See, you're a little bit better at that. <laughs> I think I said the mouth at the end. Dumb out, dumb out. Oh, that's a good one because it sounds like mouth, dumb out, yeah. dumb out. Nice. That was a good one. Yeah. How'd you like it? It's fun. Pretty cool, huh? That's good. Yeah. You should. They um, they have that uh, filter on Instagram, the gibberish one. Oh yes, yes. You should do that. Yeah. With, I've you seen should that have on someone TikTok create a filter with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good one because then people will do it on social media a bunch mm. and then you could sell stuff. Oh, it's like we make our own Mo Gab. Yeah, filter. yeah. Filter. Anybody can make one? Yeah. Oh, that's so Look cool. Look into Great it. Idea. And try, yeah. Okay, cool. I want two percent. No, I was, just I, was, I was hoping you wouldn't say anything. I was hoping you would just not ask for royalties. <laughs> no, we'll, no. We'll royalties cut this out here. of the podcast so nobody's gonna know. <laughs> You're gonna keep asking me, like, oh, it's not on video. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, no, that that that's so weird. That I don't part know where just the cut out. Went. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was mocap. So I hope everybody goes check goes to check it out on Hawaiiverse.com. Yes. Super Thanks for playing. Fun. You did great. Yeah. Better thank than you me. for having me. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we're getting to the back end of the podcast, and one question I like like to ask all of my guests is, what does keeping it aloha mean to them? You know, you see it on the shirts over there. Keep it aloha. It's the name of the podcast. So I want to know in your life, how do you keep it aloha? Um, I think aloha is like kind of defined by like selflessness. And I think it's being selfless in situations, um, no matter if they're big or small. Um, and I think being optimistic in those situations, like saying hi to people, or trying to make somebody's day if it's taking some energy away from yours, but you're giving it to them. Mm -hmm. I think that that's keeping it aloha. Um, yeah, I think like aloha is such a huge part of like the culture that we were raised in and around and um, community and helping one another is like such a huge part of that. And I think that that's what defines aloha. So whether it's saying hi to somebody that looks sad or helping somebody when you spare an extra two minutes or somebody drops something and you pick it up, I think that's keeping it aloha. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, I think it spreads, mm -hmm. you know, around you where people see you do do an act like that and then it inspires them to do it and so forth. For sure. Yeah. I always say aloha is contagious. It is. It totally is. It is. Like mm -hmm. when you see somebody like, you know, if somebody drops something and you pick something up, if you see somebody drop something, you're going to be like inspired to pick mm -hmm. something, pick that up and give it to them. Definitely. You yeah. know? Yeah. And it, I think it comes down to leading by example. If everybody led with aloha, then more people will follow. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I think just I'm I'm so grateful that there's a it's not it's not something tangible that we see, but it, it's I know it's definitely it's like, hard to define. We see it, we feel it. Yes. Uh and when I say we see it, we don't like physically see the aloha, but we yeah. see the acts of aloha maybe yes. is what I'm trying to say. It's hard to define. I think like I think growing up here, like there's so many things that you can't really describe. Like they're not like tangible material things to describe, but there's certain things that are instilled in us growing up here, like always helping to clean up, respecting your elders. Mm -hmm. When you go somewhere, you bring something. Mm -hmm. um, she brought bananas, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but like you never show up somewhere empty handed mm -hmm. and you're always, you're always giving into or to become a part of something mm -hmm. and helping others. And I think that that's like such a huge part of the culture here that like I didn't realize was not a part of other people's culture mm -hmm. until like... You, I like I dated someone mm -hmm. that wasn't from here or I, you know, I'm friends with people that aren't from here. And it's interesting to see how they uh, navigate certain situations that being from here, I would never navigate in that way. So I think Aloha is similar. It's it's hard mm -hmm. to describe or like define because there's and I like that you asked that question because there's so many different ways to define mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But once you feel it and you know it, then it's then you become because it, yeah, it ins it's instilled in you, yeah. and then you you're able to um, share and inspire mm -hmm. others. Yeah, it's funny you say that because that's one thing I noticed when I was in the Peace Corps, being around other people from you know different parts of America, is how they 
react to the aloha, the kindness, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, people are you wanna, surprised. They're like, I would get a care package from home with all the Hawaiian snacks, local snacks, and I'll share it with people. And they'll be like, what? Really? Why do you want to share this? Like, yeah, like when I get mine, I just, yeah, exactly. I'll just eat it all for myself. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's, life is better shared. That's just what we're taught. Exactly. Right? It's a, And it's something that like, you're not taught by, you're taught by watching, mm-hmm. you know, you're, yeah. it's instilled in you by like being inspired by your elders or like seeing people act that way growing up. It's mm-hmm. not like you have to bring something every time you go somewhere or like you have to like, it's not like drilled into mm-hmm. you. It's just like part of growing up here yeah. that I think is, I'm so grateful for. Yeah. I know it almost makes me feel bad that people don't have that in their life because they're so shocked by somebody just, just a simple act of kindness. Yes. And people aren't used to that. They're not used to it. And I think it's so funny because I don't know, being from here, I think it's something that's just Second like normalized. Nature. Yeah. 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 And it happens in other cultures too. For so sure. I just want to make sure Nothing people are like, oh, Hawaiian culture is the best. Hawaii is the best. But, <laughs> it is the best. Know. But, you know. <laughs> but there's also other cultures that yeah. are giving cultures and you know, For sure. family cultures. For sure. Definitely. That was very um, <laughs> politically correct of you. Yeah. <laughs> I just got to make sure, you know, social media is crazy yeah, I these know. days. I you know. I know. Anything out of context. I'm scared to do anything. Yeah. But I'm like, whatever. People are going to talk no matter what. Yeah, no so matter what. You yeah. might as well just And be it comes genuine. down to what we, we talked about earlier is that there's depending what your view on life is, whatever yeah. the environment, what whatever you learn. It it, yeah, because people live in echo chambers, you know, so everyone's going to perceive it differently. Like we had a clip where God got so much hate, but then there's still a lot of people who loved it. But no matter what, there's always going to be the two different sides. No, Not always. everybody's going to see the same thing that you see. A hundred percent. So I don't honestly know what the solution to it is. I think, like you said, just always just be genuine. It, yeah, I don't think and there's really you a... You can't control You can't control people. Mm-hmm. And so it's just staying genuine to what is truly mm-hmm. you. And I think it's not trying to control what you're doing in order to please everybody. Mm-hmm. Like as long as you're being respectful, which is also another huge part mm-hmm. of the culture here. But um, we could just keep going on yeah, how yeah, great yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, it's... I I totally agree with you there mm-hmm. and think it's it's something that we should all be aware of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you ever have a tough time growing up at all? Just yeah, being super a lot. <laughs> not fitting in with the the way people view Kahuku, people from Kahuku. Yeah. Yeah, and in, in Kaava too, like I mean, I think it's a little more gentrified now, which actually makes me really sad. Um but I think like growing up, I, me and my sister were like two out of maybe like five in total um, that weren't like Hawaiian or Polynesian or uh, like Haole people mm-hmm. that grew up there. Um, and it was hard. Like I definitely got teased and stuff, but it also like made me who I am. And I understand like I'm going to let this waterworks pass real mm. quick. <laughs> uh, no, it's okay. I don't need them. Okay. I'll, and I'm like sucking them back into my eyes. <laughs> sucking them back <laughs> into my eyes. <laughs> um, it made me who I am. And I also understand where it comes from. And mm. I think I think it's staying educated and like really um, learning about the culture in in a more in-depth way and educating myself on it. Uh, allowed me to like understand like I wouldn't get upset because I knew where it was coming from that I mean that's a very mature answer and not everybody gets to that point so the fact that you you know you're aware of that and I'm sure you you weren't aware of it in the moment yeah because in the moment it, it can suck sometimes and you're just thinking like why are people so mean why don't they you know see me like they see other people but, you know, as you get older and like you said, you travel, you see other cultures and you, yeah. you, you're, you're put in other positions where maybe you you were in their position, the people that, that teased you. And then For you, sure. you really grow empathy. and It's a different lens. Like, yes, yes, definitely. Like we were talking about. And I think it's important to remember that, like mm-hmm. when you see people react to something that you do or act out of a certain way, like that's.
Sorry. No worries. No worries <laughs> at all. <clears throat> I just want to talk so it doesn't sound like fucked up. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the time it's from like a deeper rooted thing, you know? Unhealed trauma. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that comes from places that like we can't always control. So like mm-hmm. sometimes it's never healed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I I saw a, a post that I loved on Instagram that I shared. It said that your light is going to irritate a lot of unhealed people, but mm. shine anyway. It's a good one. Yeah, because, yeah, there is a lot of colonial and generational trauma in Hawaii specifically. Yeah. And that's why... That's still exacerbated like yes, now. Yes, definitely. And that's why people treat people who aren't from here or don't look like they're from here the way that they do. And it's it's almost never personal. It's It's more about them trying to project something or, you know, something that they they saw growing up that seemed like it was normal for them to just act a certain way t- towards a certain group of people. Yeah. Um, but as, as you get older, you know, you realize, you know, it's don't take it personally because it says more about them than it does you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's important to like, If somebody does act that way towards you, like learn why, Mm. like educate yourself so that you can understand. I'll never like truly understand. Mm -hmm. Sorry. (laughs) No worries. You're good. (laughs) Maybe I can't suck them back up. (laughs) Wait, wait. You're human? Well, that's so crazy. You have emotions? Shit. I try to block them out all the time, but sometimes it just comes out. (laughs) No, that's all we're here. Keep it aloha means keeping it real as well. Yeah. Well, I'll always keep it real with the crying. It always like tends to pop out. Um, But yeah, I think like educating yourself on where that anger, that frustration or that angst comes from Mm -hmm. is super important. Mm -hmm. Um, (sighs) That's good. We'll leave it at that. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. It was very brave of you. Yeah. Oh, of course. It's, it's. Uh, important to be spoken about Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of people in your shoes that that go through it especially the people living in Hawaii and feel out of place or feel like they don't belong there's people that could be watching this as well and you know they're getting inspired by this and knowing that they're not alone you know and it's also like I think it's it's not like that it's not that horrible like um I've been so accepted by like my kumu and like dancing hula and like learning all about <clears throat> the culture and like where that comes from and why why it came from that place mm-hmm. and what it represents and um I think just because you know I look a certain way doesn't mean that I'm not educated on that and like mm-hmm truly respect it and like want other people to learn so that mm-hmm. they also know mm-hmm. what was taken away. Well, we, we just we just came into another full circle moment where we <laughs> said to lead by example. And that's yeah. exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Because, no, I hope I yeah, am. I think that's great. I mean, that's why <laughs> that's why I wanted you on the podcast is because I think your story is really inspirational. A girl from Kaava that doesn't look like she's from Kaava <laughs> yeah. modeling at some of the highest levels that you can possibly model at yeah super down to earth humble (laughs) and you know you're just sharing your story with everybody i think that's really inspiring for people to see and it's a story that i believe needs to be shared so i appreciate it thanks for having a platform that allows me to to share it like i said it's like you don't really talk about yourself that much Mm -hmm. um so it's it's cool to yeah. To feel appreciated. I don't know what it is. It might be the, the plants that we have or the shaka tea, but we get really deep and emotional on the <laughs> podcast sometimes. You're not the only one. So Oh good. Yeah. Thank God. No, yeah. I would like if I kept talking about it, I would just like cry. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> it's just I think being vulnerable is the coolest thing. Oh, and I think it's so important. I think it's mm. like I do think that there's a negative connotation to that as well, like mm. we spoke about before. But I think being vulnerable uh, as you say, lead leads by example, mm-hmm. and it allows other people to to open up and talk about or relate to things mm-hmm. that they didn't even know, mm-hmm. you know, was going on inside of them. Definitely, 
Awesome. Well, so it's ma- cool that you have a platform. Yes, I'm trying my best. <laughs> that allows me to cry on yes, here. Yes, <laughs> you're welcome. No judgment at all. Would you like another Kleenex? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll okay. take one more just, all right. just so for we'll, funsies. <laughs> we'll, we'll shift a, a little bit right now. and Because we're kind of on the topic of you. This podcast is about you. I, I'd like to ask my guests, what is something you wish people knew about you that they don't? Oh, or even something that you think people m- might misunderstand about you. Um, that's a good one. Uh, I think. I think a lot of the time it it comes down to what I look like, um, and I I want people to know that like. Um, I think there's a negative connotation sometimes with like, I'm like white and blonde and, uh, pretty in some people's, uh, lens. And I think a lot of the time that's tied to, uh, ditzy or stupid, um, or like, disrespectful or elitist like there's a lot of different words that can be tied into like what I look like physically Mm -hmm. um and so I want people to know that I'm not (laughs) (laughs) like I'm super down to earth and I grew up in a place that like none of that even exists Mm -hmm. um and I and I you know think I I try to be smart I'm very studious uh, Remember, people. She was a dork in high school. <laughs> yeah, just because she was on. Walk Not that on I love. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just because she's in crazy, famous magazines and walked on the biggest <laughs> runways in the world. She's just a nerd like you and I. <laughs> yeah, super dorky. And when people like my my little sister always goes like, I only I wish that people like knew how like weird and dorky you are because everyone thinks you're so cool and you're not and I'm like I know I tr- I'm not and thank God to social media like now I I think I like try to show it a little bit more on that that I'm yeah. like not um but yeah I'm not all those things that I look like yeah and and you don't need anybody to tell you who you are it's who you think you are and how For you sure. define yourself. Yeah, it's so external as as, val- internal yeah, yeah. validation. As long as you're living your authentic life, like, that that's all that matters. And I think it's cool because we are at a, at a point of social media too where it's cool to share all the dorky sides of ourselves. Like yeah. anime is super cool now. Yeah. And like, you know, whatever the weird thing that you… <laughs> it makes you, you like more interesting. Exactly. It relatable. Does. Relatable. Yeah, for Because sure. there's a lot of people who are closeted in a certain… Um, part of, of their life like they're they're really into like playing the flute or something I don't know just something random like that or watching anime or reading comic books or collecting figurines yeah but then you realize like how many people still do that from their childhood I so know. It's, it's like going back to what we loved as kids and being able to share that openly without fear of judgment yeah and as soon as you do that it allows others to be like, oh, wow, like yeah. I could do that too. Yeah. And it's like full circle moment again by leading yeah. by example. Exactly. Yeah. So um, sorry that I cried my way through no, that no one. Worries. Through the last like three. Yeah. You're really like <laughs> hitting me at the end with all the good ones, aren't the, you? The end is usually after social media questions, we usually get deep. <laughs> yeah. I should oh, start yeah. warning you people. Didn't tell, you did yeah, not I tell me that. I should start giving people <laughs> a warning now. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. don't worry, we're, we're, we're past the deep questions now. No, I think yeah. I want to say don't judge a book by its cover. Mm. I yes. think that's what I want people to know about me. Yeah. That's a good And I think the people that watch this will understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's the greatest thing about long-form content is that you get to really know a person, yeah. their personality. Because like in social media, it's these small tiny clips that you can just easily judge the book by its cover. And until, you know, you flip it open, you read a couple pages, listen to the chapters, then you, you really get to know a person. Yeah, but this, sure. But people just don't take the time. You know, they, I think I saw another quote. I, let, I love quotes. And I Shit. save so many quotes yeah, on my, me too. On my uh, Instagram. I like when you share them on your story too. Yeah, I like I, I've been trying to do an, one, one every every morning. But I think it was like judging people is easy. Thinking is hard or something like that. Yeah. some Something like that. And that that's that's really true because it's so easy to judge people. It's so easy just to judge them based off of one action, one picture, what they present on social media. 
But if you just don't take the time to get to know somebody or yeah. ask questions, ask deep questions for clarification, for understanding, you just you'll always be living with your, your own narrative in your head. Yes. And I think that's that's so the things we create, hurtful. the narratives that mm-hmm. we create in our heads are always so much worse normally yeah. than the reality. And I think like, I'm not like speaking from my high horse. Like I definitely see things on social media and like we'll judge it straight away. Oh, and yeah, then I, I, I Yeah, you do. But <laughs> it's kind of like this like innate like nature to mm-hmm. in a weird way. But then you kind of like take a step back and you're like, actually that could be coming from this place or like they could have meant this or like mm-hmm. you don't really know like anybody's full story. And I think it's so important to remember that social media is is fake a mm-hmm. lot of the times. And I think a lot of people think it's so real. Um, and I think it's very important to remember or to remind people that like it's curated. And, and a lot of the time, I think that there are a lot of amazing mm-hmm. platforms and spaces on social media that aren't. Um, uh, but it's kind of hard to decipher. Mm-hmm. So... If yeah. you're like freaking out about something on social media, just know that it's fake. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's not real. It's a highlight reel. Yes, it's true. Bars. Yeah. yeah. Drop the <laughs> <laughs> mic drop. Yeah, yeah. No, to- totally try. I, I agree completely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, another question I want to know is you've had all these great accomplishments. You're only 29. You still got so much more life to live. What does your 5, 10, 15, 20 year plan look like? Um, five year? I don't know, my 10 or 25, Lord. Yeah, yeah. I mean, whatever, I definitely want to be like... However far you think ahead. <laughs> I definitely at that point want to be like comfortable financially and have mm-hmm. like kids and and a husband. Um, But I think now my five year trajectory would be... Um, graduating and using my platform to, this is like my dream, but create a nonprofit that would act as a platform to help not only educate people, but people that struggle with disordered eating to find care that they can afford um, and kind of be a place where people can go to, to help navigate um, disordered eating, whether it be, you know, um, overeating, undereating, not understanding what to eat, um, having questions and kind of bringing people together to that platform and having other dietitians participate in it and, you know, holding conferences that educate people on emotions behind food and like mental health when it comes to nourishing your body and you know how like our body our gut and brain are connected and like all of those things um I'd really like to use my personal education and also my platform to to bring people together and Mm -hmm. exacerbate uh the education that really needs to be um spoken about more and I definitely want to do it in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. I love that. So you want to want settle? To you want home. to settle down in Hawaii, um, or just have a house? House here, house in New York, house in France. You know, I definitely <laughs> don't want to settle down in New York. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I always say it kind of depends on like who you end up with mm, because I think yeah. it's a decision that you make with whoever your other half is. I'm sure there's a ka of a boy who had a crush <laughs> on you in the seventh grade. That's just waiting for you, KK. Yeah, I'm, well, text me wherever you are because I don't know who you are. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I don't really know where I'll end up, but I definitely will always have mm-hmm. something in Hawaii yeah. that brings me back here. And when I have kids, like I want them to understand uh, the qualities that we were raised with being mm-hmm. raised here. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. Mahalo for sharing. <laughs> okay, so... That's my five-year plan, everybody. Yes. yes, good job, good job. And then, so what? what is some advice that you want to give to young girls who are getting into the modeling industry and want to be a model just like you? I think there's probably two things. One would circle back to what I said before about treating everybody the same, um, being kind to everyone and showing equality in your behaviors 
your behavior towards everyone on set or at a casting or wherever it may be, because I think um, kindness really, truly does go a long way. And I think people like notice it, like we say, Mm. I mean, when we share things or, um, you know, say thank you to people that aren't used to having thank Mm -hmm. you said to them. Um, I think that would be one. And then my second would be really water off a duck's back is like um, the protection that you need to go into this field with because it is super hard. It's a super harsh field. Like people are constantly judging you on what you look like. And it's, you know, people, it's, you can't take it personally um, because sometimes if you don't get a job, it's because they wanted someone with lighter hair or they wanted someone with like circular nails instead of rectangular ones. Like there's so many different like facets that go into how people choose Mm -hmm. like who they want to model for them. Um, And so it's kind of like living it day by day and, and, you know, working hard, but also just like never expecting that hard work to be reciprocated with work because it's so out of your control. And unfortunately it's out of your control, Mm -hmm. but, um, I think people always notice inner confidence and like somebody that has internal validation, it speaks louder than, than what you think. So I think showing up and being confident and like presenting yourself and with confidence in who you are, will go a lot further than, than showing up and, you know, guessing yourself or being insecure, which is always going to happen. Um, but yeah, I think don't let, don't let people's comments or not getting jobs or things like that affect, um, which is really hard to do easier said than done for sure. But don't let that affect your own confidence. Mm -hmm. Um, Cause a lot of the time it's based off of something so stupid Mm -hmm. and people let it like ruin their days. And like, for me, I mean, gave me an eating disorder for a few years. So it's definitely important to remember that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those would be the two things. Yeah, Great advice. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then just in general, not even getting into modeling, just keep going forward, keep moving forward. Yeah. Like, the, the only difference between people that succeed and those succeed is the ones that su- succeed never gave up. Exactly. It's so true. You just, I mean, you I going. kept trying for BS for yeah. <laughs> four times time the charm. Yeah, third four time. time. No, it was third, third time. time's the charm. Third time's That's what the they charm. say. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, definitely, definitely true and a great lesson to be learned. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. What would you say you're most grateful for? Oh, Jesus. Oh, gosh. Sorry. Oh, Wrong no. <laughs> Here we go. I'm ready. <laughs> um, probably my family, for sure. My family and being being raised where mm-hmm. I was. Um, my family is like super fucking awesome, and mm-hmm. I love them so much. Yeah, and they're healthy and just like taught me to not be afraid and like to genuinely just like be myself. Mm-hmm. But you're you're doing a great job at Yeah. As I cry for like the tenth time on here. Yes. That's you're doing a great job at being yourself. Yeah, this is it, people. Yeah, this is the real KK. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Dang, I set you up for that, my bad. I know. You keep why you're throwing these freaking curveballs at me. People people think I'm such a nice guy, but I just (laughs) making girls cry on my podcast. It's a good, it's a good, they've all been happy yeah, tears, yeah, yeah, to happy be honest. Tears. Okay, so. okay, cool. <laughs> I'll think of something to make you um, sad cry then. I'm just joking. <laughs> all right. What, before we get into our last question, I want to know what is something you wish I asked you today? Um, that's a good question. Uh, Did you need another one? You're good. No. Okay. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> even though it, I'm still like, they're still wet from the 
last five so, questions. So re- residual. Yeah, there's residual <laughs> tears in there that I'm trying to like soak back up. Um, I honestly can't think of anything. He really covered it all. I'm okay. just going to give you like an A plus on that. Oh, There's thank like, you. I can't think of anything else right, that well, I would have wanted to I, say. I definitely brainwashed you really <laughs> nicely over the last two hours then. <laughs> okay, then before. If I thought on it for like a whole day, yeah, yeah, I yeah. probably. You're going you're gonna to text me like tomorrow you at asked like me this. 12 and you're like, you should have asked me this. Come on. Come. Or I'll watch this and yeah. be like, oh, I wish I would have said that. Yeah. But it's for right. now, in the present moment, okay, I'm we're very good. happy a plus with in how the it's moment. going. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> All right. So before we end the podcast, I got to know, what is your life hack? Oh, my life hack. This is one thing that you told me. Everything else I had no idea. <laughs> By the way, he doesn't tell you anything. Yep. Um. It's going to sound the same thing. It's going to sound the same as what I've said before, but my life hack is just to be kind Mm -hmm. because it goes so much further than people give it credit for. So just be kind. Kindness is cool. Yeah, it's really cool. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Girls love kindness. Guys love kindness. The world loves kindness. Yeah. It goes a lot further than you ever think Mm -hmm. normally. All right, so just got my last fast fave five questions. These are just rapid fire answers, all right? Oh, then no. Then we're wrapping up, okay. right? Okay. Favorite post runway snack? Uh, a burger and sweet potato fries. Oh, that's nice. not a snack, that's a sweet, meal, but sweet like potato I fries. want a meal. Yeah. yeah. I'm on the sweet potato fries train. <laughs> not everybody likes them. I, I know, which I find so hard to believe. Yeah. But I get it. To each their own. I I got some when I was in Georgia with people and they all got regular fries and I got sweet. I was the only one that got sweet potato fries and I was, you know, just, just how I like anybody wants, you know, they're like, no, I'm like, what? Really? It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. All right. Favorite TV show. Um, oh my God, that's so hard. (laughs) I like really horrible TV. Oh, like reality TV? No, not reality TV, not horrible TV, but like sitcoms. Oh, because okay. I read so much that I just want to like at the end of the day, just like mindless stuff. Yeah, probably. I love Modern Family. Oh, that's not. That's one of the greatest shows of all time. Isn't it? Okay. Yeah. So feels awesome. I know, but I feel I know <laughs> it's so funny and it's yeah. lighthearted and it makes me yeah, feel yeah, yeah. good. But like some people say like, I don't know. I'm not trying to get philosophical with how I spend my time watching TV. Like yeah, I yeah. just want to like watch something that makes me mindless smile. entertainment. Makes you laugh. <laughs> exactly. The Office, Modern yes, Family, stuff like Office that. The Office and Modern Family yeah, are like yeah. my two go-tos. Yeah. That's a, it's a good point though. You don't always have to be super stimulated. Because yeah. sometimes people just like to have it on in the background. Yes. And kind all of, the time. Yeah. Do other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Favorite way to recharge? Uh, go in the ocean. Nice. Okay. Favorite travel destination? Home. Okay. Besides home. Um, Italy. Italy, okay. Yeah. Well, what about Italy? Um, the the culture and the mm. people and the food, like it's very like family orientated, mm. and they just are so welcoming and kind. It reminds me a little bit of, um, like how we were raised here. Like mm. it's very, uh, you respect your elders. You, um, the people are just so lively mm-hmm. and welcoming and kind yeah well they're yeah they're very close-knit like the family we see in jersey they're so family orientated and like community orientated which is Mm -hmm. like it makes me feel like i'm at home from far away and like the the, how welcoming they are is Mm -hmm. like what makes me feel like i'm at home far away and the food is so good yeah yeah that's that's the beauty of knowing your culture well enough to know that it exists in other cultures Yes. Is that you can find aspects of yeah. other co- of your culture and other cultures, and that's For where sure. you can gravitate to. Yeah, and that's what I've always done when, when I traveled. Yeah. Okay. Favorite thing to do on the airplane? This is a new question I've never asked people. Oh, um, some people like to read, listen to music, play games, sleep. Um, I like to look at photos. Like oh. I'll scroll back. Mm-hmm. If I'm like homesick or I miss my parents or like a friend or like sometimes I'll just like go to videos and just like 
sweat like just go like this and then like choose a spot mm-hmm. and like watch the videos that are yeah, there that's cool. and just think about like that moment mm-hmm. like takes you back to that i love doing that on the plane i did that in the peace corps a lot just at my house by myself so i'll just look at old photos i watch know old it's videos. like kind of sad but yeah. like i'll <laughs> laugh i'll cry i like just have like this whole movie to myself yeah, on yeah, the plane yeah. of like memories mm-hmm. that that like make me feel nostalgic mm-hmm. or excited or like you know mm-hmm. So yeah, I love nostalgia doing that. is one of the greatest feelings. I love it. I know, me too. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a feeling that you get when you find your culture and others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. For sure. I love that. Well, that's all we have for you today. I just want to oh, say mahalo you. for coming on and sharing some stories, sharing some tears, sharing some laugh, all the all of the above. Thank you yeah. so much for having me and thank you for um having a platform that allows people to express themselves um, and kind of exacerbates like the people in Hawaii and like things that they've done. And I think it's really beautiful. And I'm so honored to be here. (laughs) And I was telling Kamaka beforehand that I was so nervous to do this. And normally I like really am like a cool cucumber. Mm -hmm. I'll just like do whatever. It's fine. Don't think about it too much. But I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like so honored to be on this podcast. (laughs) You did great. Everybody let us know how she did in the comments. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and you know, it's fine. Only 7 billion people are going to watch this. Yeah. So everyone yeah. sees my ugly crying face. <laughs> and, you know, you, now you know the real That's me. That's right. We'll, we'll put a really nice thumbnail so that they, they can see that and then they can see you crying. They can just compare yeah. it and be like, what? The yeah. Heck? That's <laughs> How the, is this what, that, is that person? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, is there anything else you want to share? Um, if not, just tell us where we can find you. Um, nothing else to share. Pretty, mm-hmm. we've shared a lot, um, including too many tears. <laughs> uh, on social media, um, I'm not really. I'm like horrible at creating TikToks. I just like watching them. But mm-hmm. my Instagram is like my main uh, source where I connect with people. Yeah. Can you spell it out just in case people? Yeah, my Instagram is K E K E L I N D G A R D. The one and only. Well, mahalo KK for joining us on the Keep It Law podcast. Spread love, be kind to one another, and mahalo for listening to us today. We have new episodes every Thursday, so make sure you follow us and leave a review. I'm your host, Kamaka. Remember to always keep it aloha.